Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to Get Faster Therapeutic Results by working with the hidden part of problems. Five tips for communicating with your client's unconscious mind. People sometimes say things like, I'm in two minds about that, or part of me agrees with you, but. Now you may have used expressions like that sometimes, and if you have, you'll know what I mean when I say that a person's identity isn't singular. When we talk about me or I, which part are we really referring to? Which part of the self are we describing? The part that consciously makes decisions and intends to do something? Or the part that dilates pupils, breathes during sleep and generates dreams? and activates the immune system. Which part of us are we referring to? All of us have a duality to our identity. And the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, although clearly forming a total whole, appear to work as separate autonomous systems. Pupil dilation, dreaming, blushing, and other unconscious processes feel as if they happen by themselves, as if they're happening to us rather than from us. And yet, perhaps because we can exert conscious control over some of these processes, such as purposefully slowing down breathing, the conscious mind sometimes incorrectly takes responsibility for actions of the unconscious mind. So you might well have heard someone rage, you know, I'm so stupid for blushing, or why can't I just fall asleep? But of course, no one consciously decides to blush or have insomnia. It's the unconscious part of them that's doing the problem. And that's the part that we need to influence in therapy quite often. So how can you use the conscious and unconscious mind to encourage positive change in your clients? So number one, we need to be clear about which part of the mind actually directs which behavior. Of course, we still have to take responsibility for what we need to, to change ourselves, but someone who likes to feel in control of things all the time may be trying too hard to relax or fall asleep or even be creative. And they might find themselves trying to consciously control what is in reality an unconscious mechanism or task. That's not to say that what you decide to do consciously can't influence these processes, but ultimately it's your unconscious mind that runs the mechanisms by which these changes occur. The more we can relax with the idea that it's not the conscious mind directing a behavior, blushing or smoking or healing, etc., the more we can encourage the unconscious mind to take the reins and change the course of these processes, these behaviors. So number two, split the conscious mind from the unconscious mind. If you're a hypnotherapist, you can use a technique called splitting to influence either the unconscious or the conscious mind. So firstly, when communicating hypnotically, be sure you know which part, conscious or unconscious, you are appealing to, that you're communicating with and seeking to influence. You need to be really clear about which part of the person's mind you're seeking to communicate with. A good therapist will be absolutely clear in their own mind which part of the client's mind they're directing their communication towards and will modify how they communicate with this in mind. So the way we communicate with the unconscious mind is different from conscious communication. For example, if I say to a client, yeah, okay, now make your blood pressure lower, please. I'm speaking to them quite directly in a way that's really more appropriate to the conscious mind. I'm speaking to them as though it's their conscious mind that always controls blood pressure. But that's not the part that deals with autonomic processes like blood pressure. So splitting involves saying this to your client about lowering their blood pressure. And you can describe it in these terms. You might say something like, um, uh, now, you know there are two parts to you. There is your conscious part, which is processing my words and is aware and maybe analyzing what I'm saying and what's going on. But there is a far larger part of you that is very able 
and can do things for you without you even needing to be aware that it's happening. And it's that part of you that I want to begin to appeal to right now. It's that part of you that I'm talking to right now. The part that's apart from the conscious part is so powerful and knows how to ease blood flow through your body. And in this way, you purposefully and explicitly divide up the parts of the person. You're saying there's this part of you, there's this part of you, and I'm going to be talking to this part of you. And this is a way of implicitly saying, okay, your conscious mind can butt out of this because it's your unconscious mind that is the expert here. And that's the part I'm going to be talking to. Number three, build up conscious curiosity. If the unconscious mind is going to do what it's good at, lowering blood pressure, switching off the pain response or curing warts or whatever, then it needs to be left alone by the conscious mind. We can ask the conscious mind just to sit back and be curious and almost just watch what the unconscious mind does. So you might continue the request for lower blood pressure in this kind of a way. For example, you might say, and as it does that, as your unconscious mind does that for you, your conscious self may start to become very curious as to just how it's going to feel once your blood pressure begins to lower a little. Maybe you'll notice your hands feeling a little warmer or just start to feel more relaxed generally. And again, this uses a specific type of language, what you might call the language of duality, to distinguish between the unconscious part that actually starts to produce changes and the conscious part that needs to stand back and just be curious about it as it notices it happening. So this isn't about um, trying to use hypnosis to switch off the conscious mind, but rather giving it permission not to pay attention or to occupy itself with something else other than what's happening. All good hypnotic inductions use the language of duality, and you can even use it when asking yourself to produce hypnotic changes. Number four, using the language of duality for self-hypnosis. If I want to sleep deeply tonight, which of course I always do, I might encourage my unconscious mind to do its thing by saying something to myself like, now there's a part of me that just knows how to sleep deeply and nod off in just the right way. And right here and now, I just want to make a little request of that part of myself for later. The part of me that knows all about those moments when I just gently start to slip into a beautiful, deep and restful sleep. So I'm asking that part of me that knows how to do that. Okay. I also find that if I've forgotten something, such as someone's name, it's not uh, much use trying too hard to consciously force the forgotten material back into my mind. And in fact, that seems to make it even harder to remember sometimes if I'm consciously trying to force the name back into consciousness. Instead, I might purposefully avoid trying to remember and just suggest to myself, suggest to my unconscious mind, okay, I need to recall this name and I'm going to stop thinking about it now, but I want my unconscious mind, you, my unconscious mind, to search for me. And when it's found that name, I want to uh, I want you to present it to my conscious mind. Okay, so I'm setting myself, my unconscious mind, a little task. Okay, so my conscious mind can forget about it. It's two bits to me. And this is surprisingly effective uh, as a way of getting your unconscious mind to do the work for you, rather than trying to control everything with the conscious mind. Number five, trust the unconscious mind. Dr. Milton Erickson would often ask his patients to trust your unconscious. And by saying that, he was encouraging them to let the part of them that was expert at many things be allowed to work for them without the conscious mind getting in the way too much. So I've only just touched the surface here of how to use the power of the unconscious mind to help yourself and others, and of course your clients, more effectively. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge, and if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter, you can find it over at unk.com slash blog. That's unk.com slash blog. And thanks for watching.